Hey everyone, it's Casimus Lego, and this time I'm going to be showing you three brand new custom Lego minifigures to celebrate May the 4th and the 25th anniversary of Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. I have made the double-bladed Sith warrior Darth Maul, Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn, and the infamous Gungan Jar Jar Binks. Not only have these figures been made to coincide with the film's anniversary and relaunch in theaters, but it also serves another purpose. I've said for a few years now that I was going to be making a large set from this film to launch my Star Wars prequel minifigure series, and after many delays and many cancellations, I'm finally showing them off. So unfortunately, I have downsized the amount of figures I was planning, but that's more than okay because at some point between making these figures and the original trilogy figures I did, I decided to refocus my efforts to the most important characters to represent the film, which I narrowed down to these three. And don't worry, I'll still make figures from episodes 2 and 3, and I'll also upgrade a few select characters from the original trilogy to make for a comprehensive set of the most significant characters spread across the Skywalker saga. I hope you're looking forward to those figures. But for now, let's take a closer look at these custom LEGO Episode 1 minifigures. Let's begin with Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn, played by one of my favorite actors of all time, Liam Neeson. There was absolutely no way I was going to exclude this character in this project. He also has the first basic tan Jedi robes that I've made in three years. That said, it's certainly not a difficult design, and I was able to complete it in a less amount of time than it takes me for other figures. Right now, I have him wearing a custom fabric overcape, which is part of an alternate look for the figure, but for the time being, I'll remove it to get a better look at the tunic. The robes are painted and captures the appearance of the Jedi throughout the prequel era. Everything is here. The outer tunic, the painted under tunic, the two tabards that fold across to the top of the torso, and the waist, all outlined in a dark beige. The utility belt is made from E-tape and features the standard dark brown and medium brown combo design that always looks good. I've painted various details as well as the silver and gold pieces on the left and the buckle design. On the back of the torso, you can see the tabards, the waist, and the belt continue. The belt is painted pretty much the same as on the front, but I've added two pouches. These were dry sculpted, while the flaps are just E-tape and topped off with simple silver snaps. The waist piece in particular, I think came out really clean. Of course, the tabards from the torso and the belt aren't connected, that's so I can ensure that the torso can be removed if I so wish, and also because I prefer how this looks. Instead of having two separate fabric pieces, I've made the tabards look like just one large piece. This is a mistake on my part. I was partly using the official LEGO figure as reference, and I think I got a little confused from the printed legs. But in all honesty, I actually really like how it turned out, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense. Either way, I made sure to correct this by accurately representing the overlapping tabards on the back of the waist piece. Underneath is a pair of legs painted in dark brown with some painted wrinkles, and boots that I've done in black. Qui-Gon has some details on the front of his boots, so I've done my best to represent those thanks to these sets of 3D pieces of E-tape attached to the boots. I also really like how I've made the wrinkles extrude from the outline I painted around them. The arms are very simple. I was considering just painting standard LEGO arms to match the fabric torso, but I thought the figure could really benefit from some sculpting, so I've added just a little bit of bulk to each arm to represent the long sleeves of the Jedi tunic. Now there have been many official LEGO prints for Qui-Gon Jinn, and for my custom LEGO minifigure, I've gone ahead with the print included in 2017's Duel on Naboo. The likeness to Neeson as portrayed in Episode 1 is spot on, and the unique alternate expression is great too, though not a great moment for the character. Meanwhile, the hairpiece that debuted since the beginning of LEGO Star Wars is still perfect for Qui-Gon. Overall, the figure is very simple, but he does have a few accessories I want to talk about. First is obviously his green lightsaber. The hilt is a custom piece designed by One Brick and is available for purchase on Venom Custom Brickworks website. As you can see, the design itself is accurate and with my paint job, it came out incredibly well. I'll have a link to Venom's website in the description below if you're interested in getting your own. I've used many of his items in the past and they are always great quality. Aside from the lightsaber, the other accessories are alternative looks for the minifigure. Here is Qui-Gon Jinn, complete with his Jedi robes. These pieces are just a brown fabric overcape and a custom fabric hood, which is a first for me. 
The fabric of both of these pieces are actually the same base fabric I've used on my recent figures like Voldemort and Lady Galadriel, but this time in brown. As I said, the fabric hood is new for me. I know that in the past, I've used primarily standard LEGO hoods, but for this new series of prequel-based Star Wars figures, I just wanted to experiment with more fabric elements, and I actually really love how this turned out. The combination of these fabric pieces perfectly help enhance the feeling of simplicity that I try to aim for on my custom LEGO minifigures. The other appearance that I've made for Qui-Gon is the poncho he wore while on Tatooine. For this, I used another kind of base fabric. I believe it is called Duck Canvas, and I got it from Joanne's Craft Store, which is where I get the rest of the fabrics I use. And as you can see, the material itself looks pretty good. The shape, of course, isn't perfect, as I've based it on LEGO's official poncho pattern, which only covers one side of the torso, so I've had to make a second piece for the back and overlap them, which creates a more accurate look. For additional detail, I've cut two pieces from the brown fabric and glued it to the front and back to represent that edge detailing from the costume seen in the film. Overall, it looks pretty cool, but my main complaint is that I wasn't able to find a suitable fabric material that was also the correct color, as I think this should be more of a gray. Right now, it kind of blends in with the tunic and the general beige look of the base figure, though the brown fabric really helps for visual contrast. Either way, this was a great attempt. For display purposes, I prefer the dual look of the figure, and now that I've finished going over the fabric accessories, I can say that was it for the beloved Jedi Master, Qui-Gon Jinn. Next up is perhaps one of the most infamous characters in film history, Jar Jar Binks. Now I want to begin this section by stating that I have nothing but respect for Ahmed Best. The amount of hate that was thrown his way for portraying the Gungan was completely unacceptable. That said, I can't exactly say I'm a big fan of the character myself, but his status as a beloved punching bag in the Star Wars fanbase was too strong for me to pass up, so of course I had to include him in this project. And I'm very pleased that I did, because I think he turned out fantastic. What I think turned out exceptionally well with Jar Jar is the Gungan Otala species' signature red skin texture that I was able to paint on the arms and the head. This pattern seen on the creature is very complex, so my main goal going into it was to simplify it. So what I've done is just a random pattern of dots, curves, and ovals. I wasn't strict with myself during the painting process, and just allowed myself to have a blast with it. The skin underneath is painted in a light cream color, while the spots are painted in a brand new color that I picked out specially for the figure. I'll show you more of the skin texture later on, but for now, let's take a look at the rest of the figure. Starting down at the legs, you can see the unique feet that I sculpted. While, yes, I know it can be seen as a little bit cursed, but because Jar Jar has feet that looks more like a bird's foot than an actual human foot, I thought it would be appropriate to replicate it for my own custom minifigure. Meanwhile, the legs are very simple. There are some wrinkles that I painted, just a mirror design for both leg, and then he has a custom fabric waist piece painted in dark brown to match the color of the legs, and even has a light brown outline. I also like how the fabric overlaps itself. The torso is painted in the same brown color with some more wrinkles and the skin exposed near the top. I think I really captured the shape of the vest, this time made from fabric painted in a lighter color with a dark brown edge line which actually extends all the way around the figure. While I'm here, I also want to say that I'm glad I went with brown for the main tones of the figure, rather than the grayish look I noticed on many of the official Hasbro figures. This combo just brings in more color in the final figure. The head was an official LEGO Gungan head mold that I applied my own paint job to. You can see more of the skin color I chose, and how the skin transitions from the cream color to the orange flesh tone as seen in the skin texture on the arms. I like how I've picked out the mouth from the existing groove, and even added a bit of a smile from each end. Also, the eyes of the Gungan are very detailed, which I'm very proud of. Of course, on its own, the head would already be pretty detailed, but I didn't stop there. I've even painted the texture of the skin underneath the halus. I'm not certain if my pronunciation is correct, but in essence, they are the large fin-like ears Gungans are known for. This was not totally necessary, but it adds a great amount of detail to the head. And taking a look at the back of the ears reveals more of the random skin pattern that I painted. Overall, it turned out very nice. I really like how this Jar Jar Binks custom minifigure came out. The color of the clothing is great, and the amount of detail in the skin, in my opinion, looks excellent. Now, I didn't make any accessories for him. That was mainly due to the scant amount of time that I had to complete him. Though, if I could, I would have loved to make a Naboo battle staff for him, and one of the energy balls used in the great battle against the Trade Federation at the end of the film. 
Sometime in the future, I'll probably upgrade him with some Gungan weapons that LEGO has already produced in the past. In any case, that was everything for the infamous Gungan Jar Jar Binks. Let's conclude this review video by taking a look at the final custom minifigure. Last but not least is the double-bladed Sith warrior Darth Maul, whose face was plastered just about everywhere back in 1999. Maul has always been a favorite character of mine, so I was very excited to make him in his Episode 1 appearance. Out of all the figures in this project, he was the most intimidating to make, given how complex the facial tattoos are. I ended up painting them completely from scratch, and because of that, he also turned out to be my favorite figure in the project. Speaking of which, seems like there's not a better place to start than with the head itself. So first of all, I based this design from many action figures and statues, particularly the Hot Toys figure, and I looked at official LEGO prints to get an idea of how to paint the facial features themselves, such as the eyes and the mouth. That said, it's far from perfect, but I think it came out very good, and I'm very happy with it. I knew straight away that I was going to sand off the top of a LEGO head and smooth it out with Procreate for a nice rounded result. To begin, I painted it completely black and added placeholders where I knew the eyes were eventually going to go. From there, I did my best to replicate the facial tattoo pattern, which was a real challenge for me as I had to ensure that the patterns were pretty symmetrical on each side of the face. I spent about two days painting it, and once I added the black edges around the jawline and the eyes themselves, I was really excited with how it came out. Next came the horns. I sculpted them, and as a result, they are extremely fragile. In fact, while filming this review video, I've been very, very careful when handling this figure, all to ensure that they don't snap off. I am aware that they resemble ovals rather than curved spikes, but this was just the natural outcome of my endeavor, and personally, I think they all came out pretty good, even the ones on the back and on the top of the head. Obviously, the head was the most challenging part of the minifigure, but the rest of the figure was also pretty tricky at times to make. The torso has a ton of 3D elements, including Maul's own torso, made from fabric and painted in black, with some wrinkles and light gray outlines. Meanwhile, the torso itself was painted ahead of time. Maul also has his black waist sash and his belt. That was made with two layers of E-tape, one for the waist and one for the belt itself, and then I just painted the line work and the additional belt details. Of course, the fabric from the torso continues to the back as one large piece. The back has a few more wrinkles and more E-tape to show the belt wrapping around the waist. I was thankful I didn't have to continue those lines back here. I noticed that on the Hot Toys figure, the arms have some bulkiness to them, so to represent that, I sculpted onto the arms and gave them almost like some sleeves. I think it helps a lot with the accuracy of the figure. He also has some 3D gauntlets made from E-tape and then painted, topped off with a nice light gray outline. This brings me to the final part of the figure, that being the legs. Aside from being half obscured from the waist piece, they're pretty simple in design as it features just some black boots. The waist piece was made from painted fabric, and I really love how it captures the draping robe pieces hanging from the waist. It's a simple but really striking look, especially with the gray outlines that are consistent with the torso and the arms. Now any Darth Maul Lego figure simply would not be complete without his iconic double-bladed lightsaber. This is a custom 3D accessory and features something I've always wanted to do. But before I get to that, the design itself was created by a maker known as Bacon King and sold through Venom's website, the same vendor where Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber came from. It has fully painted details, but what makes it extremely cool in my eyes is the fact that it can be split in two, just like in the film. This was accomplished by the use of micro magnets and was partly inspired by 97 LEGO Maniac's Maul figure from a few years ago. I've been wanting to incorporate magnets into my custom minifigures for ages, and this just seemed like the perfect opportunity to give it a shot. I cut the original hilt piece in half, and then glued the magnets on either end. As you can see, I can freely split the hilt into two distinct pieces, and then reattach them to form the signature double-bladed lightsaber in no sweat at all. I was a little bit worried about the strength of the glue versus the force, pun very much intended, of the magnets, but thankfully, my super glue won't let them go anywhere. Additionally, I've also included Maul's very own custom fabric cape and hood, though putting it on was a bit tricky given how fragile those horns are. Equipped with his iconic double-bladed weapon and his shrouded appearance, this Darth Maul figure is one formidable foe, and I can't get enough of it. He turned out great! And with that, that was everything for my first Star Wars prequel-based custom LEGO minifigures. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and now we can go ahead and conclude this review. Alright, that'll be it. 
Thank you very much for checking out these custom LEGO Star Wars Episode 1 minifigures. If you have any questions, thoughts, or critiques, feel free to send them my way by writing a comment down below, and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you're interested, be sure to follow my social media platforms where I post updates, behind the scenes looks at future projects, and individual photos of all of my recent figures. Links to my social media and the links to anyone mentioned in this video are down below. As always, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.